Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on Biology Form 4. Our topic for this video is about the plasma membrane, Chapter 3, the plasma membrane. Let's get started. This video is about Chapter 3, entitled the movement of substances across the plasma membrane. We will begin by studying 3.1, the structure of the plasma membrane, and we will also study about the various components that make up the structure of the plasma membrane, as well as their functions. Here is an overview of the main components of the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane consists mainly of phospholipid molecules, which form the phospholipid bilayer. Secondly, we have the protein molecules too, for example, the channel protein and the carrier protein. Thirdly, there are the molecules that have carbohydrate chains sticking out from the plasma membrane. Examples are glycoprotein, which is actually protein plus the carbohydrate chain, and glycolipid, which are lipids with the carbohydrate chains. And lastly, there's cholesterol, which is an important component of the plasma membrane. So you can copy this schematic diagram into your exercise book if you find it useful. In Chapter 2, we have already studied the function of the plasma membrane, which is to regulate the movement of substances in and out of the cell. So the plasma membrane is like a gateway which allows certain substances to move into the cells through it, such as oxygen, nutrients like glucose and amino acids. All these will pass through the plasma membrane into the cell for the metabolism of the cell. Whereas carbon dioxide and nitrogenous waste products, like urea, diffuse through the plasma membrane and out of the cells to be removed. So the plasma membrane regulates and decides what substances can move in or out of it. So it's called a semi-permeable membrane, which allows only certain substances to pass through it while preventing others. Now, what is the structure of the plasma membrane? The plasma membrane is not just the thin line that we draw around the cells. It is actually made up of many components that have different functions to help the cell carry out its activities for the survival of the cell. So to study the structure of the plasma membrane, we have to study the fluid mosaic model as proposed by Singer and Nicholson in 1972. Fluid mosaic model, this term must be remembered. Think of FM for the acronym FM model, like the radio FM, fluid mosaic model. Now what is the fluid mosaic model? We have to be able to explain the word fluid and mosaic. The fluid mosaic model is used to explain the structure of the plasma membrane and based on this model, the structure of the plasma membrane is composed of mainly two types of molecules. Firstly, the phospholipid molecules. The word phospholipid means that this molecule consists of a lipid part and there is a phosphate group in it. Phospho for phosphate. So it's a lipid molecule with phosphate group in it. So other than the phospholipid molecules, there are also protein molecules, such as these two proteins here, that carry out different functions. According to the fluid mosaic model, 
The protein molecules are scattered or dispersed and embedded or inserted into the phospholipid bilayer. So these two in red are the protein molecules and they are inserted right inside the phospholipid bilayer, the purple and yellow structure there. What is meant by the word fluid in the fluid mosaic model? What do we mean by the fluid characteristic? Well, if you pour water into a glass and you tilt the glass slightly to the left and to the right, you see that the water as a fluid will flow to the left and right very smoothly and it's not in any way uh, damaged or anything, but you just flow smoothly left and right. So this is the characteristic that we see also in the phospholipid bilayer. The protein molecules are always floating freely, moving sideways and forming a pattern that keeps changing. So the phospholipid molecules, proteins and other components, they are not static at all. They are not rigid in their positions, not fixed in their positions, but they are always moving to form a dynamic, flexible structure. Now, the advantage of this fluid nature is that it makes the plasma membrane more flexible. For example, in the red blood cell, the plasma membrane is very flexible and the red blood cell can squeeze into the narrow capillaries. So it makes the plasma membrane more flexible and elastic. So below here, you can see the molecules moving left and right. To depict the fluid nature of the plasma membrane. The model of the plasma membrane is called the fluid mosaic model. We already explained the word fluid. It means that the components are not static, not rigid, no, but it is always moving to form a dynamic, flexible structure. How about the word mosaic? A mosaic is made up of many different parts put together to form a pattern. For example, arranging some pieces of uh, different materials like glass and stones together to form a picture. Similarly, the plasma membrane is made up of different types of molecules like the proteins, the glycoproteins and cholesterol, which are inserted and scattered in the phospholipid bilayer, as we can see from the picture on the right. So this is a protein molecule and this is a glycoprotein molecule and they are embedded in the phospholipid bilayer. They form a certain pattern because they are scattered within the phospholipid bilayer. So this is the mosaic characteristic. Various molecules scattered and dispersed in the phospholipid bilayer. We have finished discussing the fluid mosaic model. Let's begin to discuss the components of the plasma membrane, starting with the phospholipid molecule. So the plasma membrane is made up of phospholipid molecules and other components. What is the phospholipid molecule made up of? It has two parts, the head and the tails. The head is the purple part here and it is called a polar head which is hydrophilic or attracted to water or water loving. So what is the meaning of the word polar head? Not polar bear, polar head. Polar here means that it is charged. The head has some charges, negative charges, which then makes it hydrophilic. Hydrophilic means attracted to water. Hydro means water and philic means loving water in this case, hydrophilic. So the polar head is hydrophilic because having a charge, it is also attracted to water which also has partial charges on its molecule. Water is a neutral molecule but it has uneven distribution of charges. So one part of it is positively charged and one part is negatively charged. So the polar head is charged, so it will attract the part of the water with the opposite charge. 
Therefore, the head is said to be a polar head, which is hydrophilic or water loving. Now, the two tails. It has two tails which are non polar, meaning they do not have any charges on them, so they do not attract water and they are not attracted to water. Thus, they are said to be hydrophobic, meaning repelled by water or water hating. hating. This means that the tails will turn away from any environment that has water in it. So here are the hydrophobic tails of the phospholipid molecule. To elaborate further on the phospholipid molecule, let's have a look at this picture. So in A, we have discussed the head is hydrophilic or water-loving and the tails are hydrophobic. So how is that so? Looking at picture B, this is just an enlarged version of the phospholipid molecule. It has been discovered that the head contains the phosphate group, which is PO4 minus. So the head has a negative charge. And we say that it is polar because it, of the charge. It is charged. So it's polar. When it's polar, that means it is charged. It will attract other charged molecules. And uh, water is a molecule which is also polar. It has a positive and negative, partial positive and negative charge also. We'll discuss that in another chapter. So therefore, it's attracted to water and water is attracted to it. So it's hydrophilic because it is charged. But fatty acids below, they are not charged. So they are non-polar and therefore they are hydrophobic. They don't like water or they are repelled by water. Each one of us has a pair of handy hands. Do you know that you can make a hand model of the phospholipid molecule with your hands? First, clench the fist of one hand. This represents the hydrophilic head. Now release the forefinger and middle finger and extend them downwards. This represents the hydrophobic tails. Thirdly, you can use this model to explain to your friends the structure of the phospholipid molecule that has a hydrophilic water-loving head and uh, hydrophobic water repelling tails. Next, with two hands, the left and right hand, joined together like this, you can make a model of the phospholipid bilayer. So this is a fun activity, but it will help us to remember the structure of the phospholipid bilayer. How are the phospholipid molecules arranged in the phospholipid bilayer? There are actually two layers of phospholipids in the plasma membrane and this makes up the phospholipid bilayer. Bi meaning two, so there are two layers of phospholipids in the plasma membrane. Referring to the picture on the right, this is the upper layer of phospholipids and this is the lower layer of phospholipids. Now, the heads are colored red here, hydrophilic heads. So, the heads are hydrophilic or water-loving and they are attracted to the water in the intracellular fluid and the water in the extracellular fluid. So, what is the meaning of intracellular fluid? Intra means inside, inside the cell. Intracellular means inside the cell. The fluid inside the cell is the fluid in the cytoplasm, which contains water. Extracellular, the word extra means outside. So, extracellular fluid is the fluid in the environment outside the cell. So, the heads are attracted to the extracellular fluid, so they will face the extracellular fluid. And the second layer of heads are attracted to the intracellular fluid, so they will face the cytoplasm. facing outwards and also facing inwards. How about the tails? 
The tails of the two phospholipid layers are hydrophobic. So they are repelled by water. So they will not face the extracellular fluid or the cytoplasm, but they will face each other. As seen in the diagram here. The yellow colored tails, they are facing each other to form a region that is hydrophobic or water repelling in the center of the phospholipid bilayer. So we must be able to explain the arrangement of the heads and the tails in the plasma membrane. This diagram shows the position of the phospholipid bilayer in relation to the other components of the plasma membrane. If you're asked to label the phospholipid bilayer, you can draw a bracket like this to include the two layers of phospholipid molecules and label it as the phospholipid bilayer. We will end this video here because the other components will be studied in the next video. We will study about channel proteins and carrier proteins in the next video and also about glycoprotein and glycolipids and the cholesterol in the next video. In this video, we have studied about the fluid mosaic model and also the structure of the phospholipid molecules and the structure of the phospholipid bilayer. In the next lesson, we will continue to study about the three remaining components of the plasma membrane, which are the protein molecules, glycoproteins, glycolipids, and cholesterol. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.